If a family intervention doesn't work, I don't know what will. I mean, we need Gerald to get the job done. He doesn't care about us, but his family? He's got to answer to them for the rest of his life. The only thing is what, what bugging them the most is your time. That's it. It's nothing else. It's, it's when they need you and you're not there on those times when you need to point out something. And that's why, Gerald, is they, they kind of hard on you when you're not there. Oh, probably. They, they, they. I think the other day they needed to know something, and 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 you were you were, you wasn't there. So when you not there, they have to take it upon themselves and and try and make a decision on what to do. And they don't want to be in that position. Without, I understand that, but still, when they when they when they when it's I think they're looking for sacrifice. Like, Perry sacrificed whatever he had to do the rest of the week to come down and take time just to come to the meeting. He could have said, hey, I got something to do. Right. I got a family, I got kids, you know, and not came. And he <laughs> made a sacrifice to come and to stay a few days. Mm -hmm. I think for the same sacrifice from you. This is for the Foggy Bobby Shop. Exactly, and that's what you and said. You get around there, right? It's for the Foggy Bobby Shop, and that's yeah. for Gerald. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Randy Stevens, the man of steel. You're listening to Good Morning Up Country. Alex Smith, our most famous seven-year-old who's overseeing construction on the Little River Trail Park, has asked me to personally put out a call for volunteers. He said, and I quote, I need 300 of y'all to help me build. He then added that he himself wasn't going to actually do the building, but then why should he? He's got us. I'm going to have about 300 people under my command, so it's going to be a big, big job. Everybody's getting ready to build the big playground, bigger than anybody's playground on the earth. It is pretty chilly out here, but we're going to build a park anyway. Just about everyone in town showed up. Resident twins, Babs and Dabs. I had a tough time getting up this morning. I never get up this early. Philadelphia transplant, Sarah Lenahan. You ready to put this playground together? I am ready to put this playground together. Right. And a very confident David Makins, who runs the teen club here in town. So I'm a retired military. I'm qualified to do anything in America. <laughs> To help us, we called in Kaboom. Kaboom is a national nonprofit organization that works with communities, businesses like the Home Depot, and individuals to create safe and healthy play opportunities for children. Kaboom comes in for one day, and they bring in tools, trucks, movers, everything. My name is Jenna, and I am from Kaboom. I want to officially welcome you to the Kaboom Playground Build with the town of Lawrence. When we're out there and I see these build managers and they're wearing these funny looking costumes, I'm thinking, man, what in the world are we getting ourselves into? The costumes are to remind the adults who they're building the playground for. Sometimes people really resist the tiaras specifically or the big ladybug wings, but usually they embrace them. I bet those guys will have their tiaras on all day. If this playground does not look good, and it shall be pretty and nice. If it does not work good with me, then we'll have to put it back together. <laughs> Again. Well, the Kaboom people have told us that, that while they're working, no children are allowed to pass this line for safety reasons. How can I be the project manager if I can't even see the playground? You're going to be like the football coach. You're just going to run up and down here yelling at people all day. I'm not allowed to go in the playground, but that's not going to stop me from barking out orders at y'all. <laughs> It's going to be so beautiful. Lord have mercy. In a matter of just a few hours, all of these people are going to build us a huge two-acre playground. Wow. 300 people under Alex's command. We went to war. Let's get to work! Ready? push so hard with just any seven-year-old to be a project manager, but I think Alex is something to be reckoned with. 
One of you's wearing your hat and one's not. One, What's going on, Dabs? One has a rake and one doesn't. One has a rake and one doesn't. What's going on, Dabs? I have been delivering. Nothing. I've been asking people who needs water and I have been taking water to people, which is important. People need don't need to get dehydrated. How's that sound to you, Babs? She has been doing crap. <laughs> she hasn't been doing anything. <laughs> at all. Babs just thinks she looks cool in the hat. What are we doing? The goodness trucks is weird to show. I was ran into some snags this morning. You know, maybe we can't find any drills. No drills anywhere? Uh. We're missing the power drills that we need in order to build the picnic tables. How are these guys going to work without any drills? One down and 78 to go. We couldn't find any drills, but they'll be here after they can get some of this food. Team ants need some drills. Taking a page from Patrick's book, Alex was all over the place. We don't have any drills, and we don't have anything. Wow. We want some right. coffee? Can't take no for an answer when you're a project manager, so you gotta find the drills. If someone says they're not here, then you gotta go get them, and you get in your car, and you drive, and you get them, even if your mom has to drive you. Here's the drills you guys need for the project. Thank you. Okay. We re really, really need these. Why didn't nine faster drills? Oh, finally, you brought it to us. And look. Oh, my goodness. Two up. <laughs> Thank you. Is that so good enough? The Foggy family handed Gerald his head, you know, he had not been doing what they needed him to do, you know, he had been representing for them. The family talked and he did real good, and uh, the family was real pleased with it. I'm really hoping the family intervention worked because I'm expecting to see a new Gerald tomorrow. The Foggy's intervention was a success. Gerald showed up on time and ready to work. As a project man, I need to be on site. And I'll be there uh, with the project until it ends. I think you know he's got the message. He's showing up, he's there on time, he's watching stuff, he's giving his input. Let's go guys, get this work done, let's go! Once Gerald kicked it into gear, we had more volunteers and we knew, knew what to do with it. The entire Foggy family was there, just ready to paint. It is totally amazing to see how many my relatives came out, some that hadn't been out before, making an effort to come out now throughout the completion of the project. I was just amazed to see, especially the youth. Man. Oh, man, what's going on? I'm just coming to check on y'all, man. It looks like the family's coming together. I'm really working. If that's a new Gerald, then my work here is done. <laughs> it's going to be the nicest barber shop in South Carolina. The barber shop area, I want to make a big F in the middle and create some kind of new, you know, identity, a new sign for the new barber shop. And then on each mirror, F, 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 F. I see Maybe. a theme. It's called typography. <laughs> <laughs> you guys approve? I love it. I can't wait till Mr. Foggy sees all this. Hey, let's yeah. see if this fits. All right, slide it this way. Cool. No, not cool at all. Shut up. We're like a half inch out of square. Ah, uh, whatever. We got a problem. <laughs> These here drawer fronts aren't um, here. Where are they? The lumber company sent me poplar instead of oak one by eight. So currently I have nothing to make the drawer fronts out of. It's very late right now. I haven't seen them yet, so I doubt they're going to get here. You need poles? Poles? Yeah. I say poles. They're not poles, they're poles. Poles! We've been arguing about this for two weeks. That's because you still say it wrong. Poles. I'm from a different part of the country. What are you talking about poles? Poles. Drawer poles. Oh, poles. Poles. Poles, poles, poles. This is the one in the You guys came at the right time. Oh, absolutely. We're going to have the sinks are going here. Okay. And here. 
And we put the drawers this side because Jimmy said you probably cut from to my right. Right. Which is true. Let me see what it feels like. Oh yeah. During the final push, my energy was concentrated on the most important part, Foggy's pictures. Mr. Robert. Wow, look at Robert. <laughs> <laughs> it just says your last name, which is nice because yeah. it represents the whole family. Yeah, and you all right. played at one time. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, I know for myself, my father just like been on pins and needles. Definitely nervous. What's he nervous about? He hadn't been over here. allowed near the playground because I had the megaphone. Get me up there! Hey, where's our boss, Alex? <laughs> it's gonna take your face to that. Don't forget the piece over here! There's one that you forgot to get over here! Alex had everyone working at a frantic pace, but 500 pounds of cement had to get mixed, and one man was not going to let Alex down. We get your men to mix better. We're getting dry on the bottom and wet on top. We need it mixed. Okay. Okay. And I know you can much. make them do it. You know it. Thank, Thank you. you. What's my name? I don't know. I'm the chocolate cowboy. Say what you want about the chocolate cowboy. That dude knows how to make some cement. I'm keeping it moving. We were mixing all nine bags every two minutes. And we got 11 drivers. They are moving faster than they mix it. Let's get to work. I had one person to quit on me. That's because his foot got wet. Had on sneakers. When you're working with a jacket, God, why you don't wear sneakers? <laughs> you wear shoes. Chuck and Cowboy is a man. He's, uh, he's putting the orders on us, and we're getting the job done. You're doing a great job right now. Okay, listen up, y'all. You got to dig harder. Make sure it's wet in the bottom. Yeah, because it's wet on the top don't mean it been mixed right. Mix the cement or leave it in the bag. Come on, side, Someone came by a few minutes ago and said, would you believe that slave driver? I said, sure, I live with him. <laughs> I'm really upset that we're this far in the project and there's still a lot of trash around. We gotta get that cone out of the water. Which one do you really want to get wet? Both of you are going to get it. I'm not getting it. The river looked pretty gross, you know, it has trash line in it and it's all gooey and I didn't really want to get in it and of course Babs wasn't going to do it because she's so lazy, so. It's cold. <laughs> Go, 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 help your sister. What are you doing? You can hand me the cup. You know who's the nicest twin now. I had to get bossy with Babs and Dabs. Alex was about two more seconds away from getting thrown in the water. We're slowing down the motor. Oh, well, come on. We need more people. Need more wheelbarrows. He's, he's playing cowboy. He's got everybody jumping. He keeps barking orders and screaming at them, and they look like they enjoy it. I asked the leader up here to let me know when they got enough cement. But they wait until I walk up here and say, oh, you got too much. You got too much. We're good. We don't need any more concrete. Okay, for a while. well, y'all do. You can just sit back and relax. No, I'm not going to relax. Like I'm, I'm going to let my other people relax. I'm not going to relax because we got some mixed cement there. My men, ladies and men, I pushed them wheelbarrows all the way up here and they don't have any place to put it. So my job now is tell them, sit it in play, let them use it. We're going to take a break. That's it. This was the first project Patrick and I did together, and we'd gotten off to a shaky start, but by this point, it was less about construction and more about emotion. Structurally, it's not a fantastic building, but you, it just has a soul. This, this whole project has really moved me, not just because of the project, but because of Mr. Foggy also. We could have put a dirt floor in here and thrown some paint on the walls. He would have. And he would have 
been so grateful. Patrick stopped thinking of Foggy's as a job and started feeling it as an experience, a soul, a, a life in itself this building was. And that was Foggy's and his family's. His words to me the other day were <clears throat> that he felt like God had sent us here. And once he started connecting emotion with space, then he got it and he cried. Just to set the record straight, Patrick and I are the criers of the four of us. <laughs> I'm not a crier. We, yes, you are, and you giggle all the time, like me. This is our partnership. The other two can't make them cry pretty much ever. But you ask us to say goodbye to anybody, just we'll pass it off to William and Jimmy. Everyone becomes family. <laughs> The day we had the playground installed was just madness. Our golf course guys are still here. We haven't graded yet. We got all this compost and mulch and other material that we got to take care of. And if things couldn't get worse, Jenna from Kaboom had another hiccup for William. Hey William, um, I just want to let you know that we can't have that heavy machinery on our site because of some issues with safety. We want to make sure our volunteers are safe. So okay. we really can't have it right now. I'm sorry. Jenna. She's, she's a great person, but she has to understand the scope of this project. The playground is, is a big portion of what we're doing, but it's not the whole thing. You see my rock wall, you see my swings, you see my slide, you see my playground. You gotta do something here. This is a huge project. You guys are a big part of that, but it's a lot of stuff to do. Give me some swag. Come with some swag. You gotta do what you gotta do. I know you're safety minded. I've been told I can't use machinery as long as Kaboom is here. I'm not, I'm, I'm very hard-headed, so <laughs> it's always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Jenna's going to kill me. She is so mad because she told me, she told me twice now not to have any machinery going. Well, I'm really upset, Jenna. Really. What did you do? I had to use a bobcat. I had to. She told, me I she told you not to. I know, <laughs> but I had to use it. So check this out. She's really mad, and I don't know what I want to do. So I need you to get me, like, go get me, like, a bouquet of flowers or something from the store. I'm serious. I need some flowers and, like, <sighs> make it a nice bouquet. For real? I'm serious. Landscaping was the last priority there, and I was about ready to send the trees down the river and call it a day. But you guys are going at 3.30, right? Yes, we're going to be done. Because 3.30, I mean, because you're killing me here. We're on a deadline here. She said 3.30. I told Jenna from Kaboom that if, the, if, if she's not done at 3.30, I don't care. My trusts are moving. Start up at 3.30. All right, all right. One way or the other. All right. All right. It's, it's hard having to wait until the last minute every time, and then everyone expects the plants to look beautiful, and I've had no time to do it. Um, it's, it's hard on me. I was worried about this from the beginning. Help us motivate everybody over there to bring all of that mulch into this playground in the next hour. Don't stand there! We only got one hour! It's got to be ready by 3.30! William is yelling and giving all kinds of static about, man, kaboom, better be finished by 3.30 or else. And then the next thing I know, he's giving flowers to the kaboom lady. These are for you. Oh, <laughs> I smell. Um, smell, smell. Oh, and the car. Aw, you guys are so nice. Aw. <laughs> he's either a tough guy. I don't think so. He's not a tough guy. He's a softie. And I know that I made you mad, as I, as I can often do, but <laughs> I just Aww. wanted you to know that thank you so much. You just wanted to smooth things over with you. Aww. Good work, guys. Good work. High five. There you go. At Foggy's, we were down to the wire, so I sent Gerald out to pick up furniture for the barbershop. We got some renovations going on down at my father's barber shop, uh -huh. and I just come by looking for some uh, beautiful leather couches for him. Would you like that? Grandfather probably liked that too, wasn't he? He probably loved that, wouldn't he, Taylor? Excellent. 
minutes. If you guys can just leave me alone in here for like two minutes, I can get this all together. Design is not a science. It's something you feel. Could you bring some of those white end tables over? For How many black chairs do we have, you guys? Cool. I think right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think I need the ottoman to provide more seating. It's like a sculpture. It sculpts itself. You may think you're carving David, but it turns out to be Diana. Oh, I have tables coming. Tables will go right here. I don't follow rules. I follow emotion. You know, and you don't know what it is. It tells you. Right there. Right there. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter F. I want to laugh, but sleep deprivation has taken over. We'd been up all night, all of us, doing everything at the very end, which always happens. And we were on pins and needles before they came in, because if Foggy doesn't like it, I will pack up my design bag and call it quits. And I can't wait to see my uncle face the day of the grand opening, because they worked hard for so many years, and I think they really, 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 really deserve this a lot. I never would have thought anything like this would happen. Thank you all for coming, and I bet half of you are all foggies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh we're all foggies today. We have a really, really beautiful project we think that's very close to our heart, and we can't wait to show you. So, you want to count with me? One. Wow. Two, three, three. Ah. Robert, hey, Perry. I took Gerald and Perry and Robert and Willie in privately to have one moment by themselves in their new space. I want you to walk in. Okay. And just have a look. Okay. Okay. Take your time. Okay. <laughs> Willie paused coming in that first step. <laughs> <laughs> I sensed maybe he was a little nervous. <laughs> wow. Woo. Oh, that was. Woo. To see Mr. Foggy and his brother Robert there, you know, they, they showed a lot of emotion for who they are. And people oh, like, yo. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, man, I'll tell you the truth. Is that your father over uh, there? Yeah, that's him. The pictures touched the Foggies the most. It was several lifetimes preserved for all to see. And these are all my children right here. Mm -hmm. That was one of your favorite ones, right? Yeah, I kept it all the time. Wow! Oh, woo! Woo! Yeah. 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 What you talking about? Yeah! Oh, I can't woo! believe it. <laughs> when I walked in the barber shop, I was helpless. So amazing. Amazing. Yeah. What the F? Let me see if I stand on it. First time in Fox the Bible Shop Center has been renewed. A lot of history. It never will leave. Legacy will always will be here. Foggy called in the rest of the Foggy family, and when the Foggy family comes, it's like a stampede. Hey everybody, come on in! <laughs> Never would imagine ever the 
my lifetime. Especially the old pictures of uh, the brothers up there. Yeah. And your dad up there, the pictures right. up there. That's right. Yeah. All those sad days. Baby boy. Yeah, your baby son up there. Yeah. yeah that, that's great. That's great. That one. The Foggy family is really tight to begin with, but I think something like this made a tight family even tighter. And I think it taught Gerald a little responsibility. I love you, Dad. I love you, son. <laughs> Gerald, love you. Love you, son. I love you, Dad. Foggy's barbershop renovation was about a man's legacy. But as we look forward to the big park unveiling, William was going to have to pull an all-nighter. William has been under a lot of stress with this park. This is the biggest project he's taken on. I've got a couple of hours tomorrow morning. I'm rolling the last of the side now. He's now making up songs about horseshoe pits in the middle of the night. I mean, standing in the night. Building horseshoe pits by my headlights. Building horseshoe pits by headlights. That's awesome. To be honest, I don't, I don't think the song was very good. I've never built a regulation horseshoe pit. Well, we should, well, we're putting this thing regulation, man. So if that's what the drawing says, then that's what it is. Williams got me over there building a horseshoe pit. So I did what any mature person would do, and I just stopped working and laid down in my truck. <laughs> Good morning. You're listening to Good Morning Up Country. First order of business, I want all your butts out of bed and down to the Little River Trail Park at noon today for the big reveal. What are you doing? I am trying to finish. It was a mad rush at the end to get things ready for this playground. So much was going on. And then I had 100 plus kids waiting just to bowl me over if I wasn't out of the way at noon. It was madness. There were a ton of things left to do. We had mulch piles, gravel piles, plants, all that stuff still needed to be taken care of. Horseshoe pits still going together. I'm telling you, if I'd had hair, it would have fallen out. There's so much left to do. I could use another good hundred people right now. I was so stressed at the end. All right, one, two, three. And this is kind of like cleaning up and getting ready for like a big birthday party or a surprise party. But the surprise could be, hey, we're not done. I'm sitting down. We what are you guys doing? Here. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on. We gotta get up. We gotta get up. Get us out of here. set for the big reveal over at the park and Jimmy's truck is parked in the middle of the park. You gotta get out of here before we can reveal, you got it? If a truck needs moving, I'm moving it. So Jen in her fancy outfit jumps into Jimmy's truck and about dumps all his tools out. DMC baby, come on! Come on! Come on! Ride right that way! Woohoo! Here we go. Who's this park for? Who no! wants to play? Yeah! Are you ready? Yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Alex, get ready! There was a barren field with some trash that no one wanted to go in, and we've created a playground, a miniature golf course, and landscaping that is so beautiful, and you have children who want to be there all the time. It's good. This park was most, probably a lot of you have been here working on it, so thank you if you were, and if you're ready to get on the playground, just get ready now, because I'm going to count to three. One, two, The 
this is an amazing day. The um, it's it's like a miracle. We could have never afforded this. This was the most special day for us as well as Alex because we've worked hard and it's finally here. We finally opened a beautiful park and we're so happy that all the people came out to enjoy it with us. The freezing cold, the long hours, the constant running and confusion was all worth it when I heard the cheers of those kids and saw them running up on their playground. <laughs> I'm a big man and I can admit when I'm wrong. Jen, kids can be project managers and they can do a good job. He was the one who didn't want a child to have any control in this project at all. It was really important that they bond and he believed in a child. That's right, that's right. He was a great guy, he worked out. Thank you. My favorite cast member is William because he's really nice and I like him and he likes plants and so do I. That Alice is a special kid and to find out that I was his favorite, you know, uh, that was really good. You know, Alice is my guy, you know, he works hard and he's great at motivating. Yeah, the time that we got stuck in the sand, I right. tried as well. <laughs> Alex, when you get out of school, look me up. I hire you in a heartbeat. All right, man. <laughs> on the next town hall. Most people call me the chocolate cowboy. Come on, Dad, you gotta get in shape. Nah, nah, nah. Paul had a part of this car. I salute you. Now, one of you bab and one of you dab. Now, if you bab, <laughs> this gotta be dab. Nope. I get emotional when it comes to things. Sure. <laughs> Bam. No. But this is dead. No. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. Oh. Assume a New York state of mind. At the oh. In Lawrence, South Carolina, we start two new projects. A much needed teen center. I'm ready to break stuff. And a historic neighborhood. Let's go, troops. We, I want you all lined up right over here. We're not finished yet. She's rearranging everything. How will the project managers handle the pressure? I get emotional when it comes to things. Sure. Yes. No. All right. Find out next on Town Hall. You can't be in here, David. In my own club. Go. South Carolina is located 35 miles south of Greenville. It's everything you'd expect a southern town to be. The people are friendly and there's always plenty of gossip. The homes are modest, farms are plentiful, and on any given day you can grab some home cooking right on the newly renovated town square. But there's more to Lawrence than what can be seen from Main Street. And these areas need our help. There's an area in Lawrence right off the town square called Back Street. In times of segregation, this was the old African-American business district filled with cafes and taxi stands. That alleyway leads you to the back street. It was out of the way of everything. The back street, that's just literally what it meant, discarded. Back street was the place of town where the blacks gathered to enjoy each other. That's the only place we had to go that we could really meet people and do different things, like dancing, listening to music. To me, growing up there, that was the life. I mean, regardless of what you went through during the week, if you can get to the back street, <laughs> that was kind of like a savior area for you. Now the back street is dead. If you wanted to know anything about this back street, talk to Sarge. Lives in Miss Judy Franklin's former resident. This is a beautiful building. 
It needs some help, though. It needs a little bit of help. I'm concerned kind of about the stucco on the siding. I want to remove the stucco. I want to really go with the antiquity. I want to go back to the way that thing was made. That's my goal. You know, there's a reason people put stucco on buildings that are that age. Maybe there's something wrong underneath there, but I want to give it a shot. What's underneath it is the old stone and the old brick, and uh, it could look really, really neat under there. As much as I would love to remove the stucco on the front of this thing, I just don't think it's going to happen. There's no way of knowing until after you actually take it off, but there's some reason that someone put the stucco on to begin with. So we're scouting Sarge's place to see if this is a place that we all decide to do. And Sarge pops out. <laughs> <laughs> Sarge is a character, let me tell you. He's, he's, he's got a hundred stories. He's been in the military forever. I got stationed in Kansas City, Missouri. I like Kansas City. You like Kansas City? Yeah. I do too. They have lots of barbecue. That's really good. Sarge is a trip, man. That guy has got more stories. You know, everybody go, man, you got an amazing life. You know, I said, boy, y'all ought to get a final for it. <laughs> a sergeant major in the military, Sarge has traveled all over the world. When he retired, he and his wife Harriet decided to call Lawrence and the Franklin House home. It's New Orleans style. Yeah. It is New Orleans yeah. style. Yeah. I like that with the rod iron. Yeah, with the rod iron. What happened at the end? A truck hit it. That's a big truck. Yeah, he had no business coming out and he hit it. My wife would not repair it because she would have had to replace the whole thing in order to get it to match. She said, I'll leave it like it is. And she died and it left just like that. Four years ago, Sarge's wife Harriet died. When Harriet passed, I was numb inside. It left a void in my life. It really left a void in my life. Since Harriet passed away, he has let himself and the house go. But he is still full of life. Sarge is hilarious. He really wants us to pick his project. Keeping my fingers crossed, my toes crossed, and my knees knocked. <laughs> and I'm going inside, and I'm going to get my crow's foot out and my rabbit ears, and I'll see y'all. Right. Great meeting you. All right. Nice, nice to meet you. Have a good day. Taking on the, the Sarge slash Backstreet project is huge. Not only do we have the Franklin house, we've got the alley itself and a vacant lot that's across from Sarge's place. This thing is like redoing half a city block, not just a building facade. It's very scary. The space right across from Sarge's, right in front of there, is just a great space. Used to be a taxi stand and a cafe. That's all gone now. So we've got to get together yep. and come up with a plan to bring some of that spirit back. We gotta have some sort of some sort of dedication memorial, something to say what this place used to be. So you want to bring yeah, back some world. memories of what used to be here? We bring in a little bit of Sarge's life, and we bring in right. a little bit of life from this whole street. From the past? Yes. Yeah. Right in this so, little area, right? Yes. You date yeah. some of the uh, lawn furniture or whatever you want to put in here. Well, we love the idea of putting, like, chairs and things. People need places to come out and, and interact. I'm just seeing a, a nice, open, green space with beautiful plants and benches for people to sit down on and come out and even put some some sort of monument or memorial there for the town. Alleyways are usually pretty shady. Doesn't matter how much light you got, you don't want to walk down it. But when you introduce color, like the Coca-Cola mural, it gives you a reason to pass down that way. The Coke mural going down the alley to Back Street, it's all kind of ghosted out, but you can really tell what it is. And as far as I'm concerned, I think it's very important to do that. I love the Coke mural. From what I understand, that thing has not been touched since the 50s. Bring them back to something that looks like it should be there instead of something that just was there many years ago and nobody cares about anymore. Bring back the Coke mural. This is a really important thing that needs to be done. This is the last of the African-American building, the cultural mecca of this community. And if we don't do it, it could totally disappear. That, that area would be a great place to restore and become a historical landmark. It'll be interesting to see what's gonna happen. Sarge is by far one of my new favorite friends in the world. No doubt. We gotta do it, guys. <laughs> we got we to. We gotta do it. All the African-American story district. Mm. All about it's it. It's great. Yep. Man, that building is awesome. It's beautiful. It's historic, but it's not falling down. It's structurally it's sound. Everything's yeah, it's fine. Really it's all cool. mostly it's cosmetic. You could do the doors and stuff. Look, yeah. Look, look. All we have to do is replace these windows. Because they're vinyl. Vinyl windows on a historic building. Stupid idea. The yard next door to it looks 
kind of like a junkyard. Yeah. I mean, they there's try. some old cars, and we got some pretty sad plants. It's hard to maintain something like that. So let's give them something that's a little easier to maintain. You can say no to a man like that. Mm -hmm. Right. He was a sergeant. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Major. He was a sergeant major. A sergeant yeah. major. <laughs> but I mean, as far as him taking direction from us, or, or from anybody for that matter, it's going to be a difficult uh, sell. But he has two kids. He has two guys here. Or, or, or a couple of sons Two nearby. Two sons here, a daughter in New York. And a daughter in New York. So he has one daughter. Uh -huh. There's you one know person. he's a big softie to her. She's the only woman in the family right now that he has to answer to. That'd be a perfect project manager. To accomplish the Backstreet Project, we would renovate the facade of the Franklin Building, update the green space, including a memorial, and refurbish the antique ghost mural. Sarge has three kids. He has Todd, who lives a mile away with two kids and his wife. We have Kenny, who lives with Sarge. And then we have Karen, who lives in New York City. My dad, oh man, what can I say about my father? He's great. He's the greatest father in the world. Being in the military, you, you, your father is disciplinary, but at the same time, my dad had a soft side. My mother and my sister. I think it'd be a great idea if we flew Sarge's daughter Karen down from New York to take over as a project manager on this project. One plane ticket for the 15th. Just one seat, it's on my MasterCard, flying into Greenville, South Carolina from New York. Monday night for bonus episodes of TLC's hit show, Town Hall. The New York Times calls it one giant leap for reality television. <laughs> Jump on board the Town Hall craze and catch up on the first three episodes of Town Hall Lawrence, Monday starting at 8, only on TLC. You two can pitch in and help the town of Lawrence. TLC will throw in $15,000 for a bonus project and you get to choose the renovation. Go to TLC.com. Choose between renovating the rusty railroad trestle or building a picnic shelter in Little River Park. The winning project will be unveiled in the final episode of Town Hall Lawrence, sponsored by MasterCard. I absolutely think that Karen is Sarge's little girl and he just turns into melted butter whenever she's around. Going into this town hall meeting, we have a huge surprise. We'd like to address a building in an area that is a significant part of African American history in Lawrence. And you know what? It's kind of on the decline now. It's an area we like to call Back Street. Correct? <laughs> back here and we also would like to work with a very special man by the name of Sarge. Now, finding a project manager for a project like this, it's a big project. And we know you like to be in charge. <laughs> There's one person who you have a real hard time saying no to. And she calls you daddy. No, she is. Oh. so good inside I don't think I can sleep. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> busting at the seams. Of all of his children, because I'm the only girl, I have that special way of getting next to his heart and getting him to nudge and, and move where he won't move for the boys. <laughs> this is another day in Lawrence. You're listening to Randy Stevens, the Man of Steel. Karen Dacre, Sarge's daughter, arrived in town last night. When asked why she came back, she said to whip my daddy and backstreet into shape. Good luck, Sarge. You're gonna need it. The teenagers in Lawrence wanted us to know that they need somewhere to hang out. There's a place called the Three Star Club, but it isn't for everyone. 
There's not really a place here in Lawrence that we have to hang out. It's mostly segregated, like the black people hang out and the white people hang out. There's not really a place where both of them could hang out. People have told me that Three Star is a place where, you know, young kids go, that it's not that safe. Three Star is kind of ghetto and it's broken down. Three Star Club isn't anything great, I don't think, especially from what, what I've heard. Three Star do need help. Three Star need help bad. So we met up with Three Star Club owners David and his partner Mary. I'm David Makins. Most people call me the Chocolate Cowboy. <laughs> the main difference between David and the Chocolate Cowboy is the Chocolate Cowboy seems never to be serious. David is serious. So why are you guys here? Why are we here? We're here for the teenager. We want the teenager needed some place to go. I had no mother or father. I never had anyone say, well, David, I love you. And that hurted me all through my life. So I'm going to do something for kids came up like me, give them a place to go or something to do. David and Mary have the compassion, they have the heart, but they don't have the pocketbook to fund the teen center. Lately, we haven't been having uh, too much uh, petition because no security and no lights. People get scared mm -hmm. off. If people feel unsafe, they're not going to go. So most of this, most all of these problems are caused by bad lighting. You light something good enough, people come. I hear, see, so you got your own security here, guys. Yes, we got our own security. <laughs> <laughs> now, this here may sound kind of weird or strange, but Three Star Clue, that's not Three Star Clue. The B fell off it, Three Star, Star Club. <laughs> Who would ever name their club the Three Star Club? It, normally, things go up to five stars. So what you say, my club is average? Three Star needs help. It's got great potential, but no one even knows it's there. I want you to take me on a little tour back there. Yeah, Just take me around, show me what's going on. Okay, first we start off with the pool table. You're talking about your pool table. It's on blocks. Jim, where's your level? Literally. It's, now, is this thing level at all? Do you know? It's, it's pretty much level. I would say, <laughs> this is the DJ room. Is this part of your sound system here? It's we just... got power cords running through water. I'm not gonna claim to know everything about everything, but keeping all your DJ equipment in three inches of water just doesn't seem like the best idea to me. It's just a little bit of water. Yes, it's only a little bit. It is, if it would rain for four days and four nights, it'd be much more. Next is the kitchen. If you all go in the kitchen. There was some nasty stuff in the kitchen that we encountered. The whole place was stinking. We didn't know what it was. It was nasty. I want to know what happened here. What happened? Well, once we had a piano here, and the, the, the person was playing the piano, I don't know what happened, they got up like that, just the elbow hit that in. David is definitely out there. He's talking about a piano player putting his elbow through the wall, and he's just, he's nuts. you all will do is completely haul out what's there and and replace it. You should frame that and put it on your wall. The house needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of love and it needs a lot of attention. You know there's no telling what's underneath that stucco because it's an old building. That stuff was put on years ago and what's not falling off the wall is stuck really really well. Look at this. This is pretty bad. Uh, the brick is pretty much just falling apart underneath the stucco over there. Let's take off what's loose and hanging, and then we're probably just going to have to repair it with stucco and then go back with it. Yep. Uh-huh, all right. Okay, all right. Bang, bang. Go! Ho! Oh, yeah. oh. I like your attitude, Patrick. I like your attitude. <laughs> I'm trying to work. <laughs> Jimmy, I got a question for you. What's that? What is all of this going to be when we get finished, baby? That's the mystery. Oh! Karen, when I look at my sister now, I see my mother. Mom was my heart. She was my spirit. I love her and I miss her. And she just kept everything together. She kept everything together. She was, she was all of those qualities that I believe a man would look for in a woman. For this blessing to be bestowed on the Dakers family, I think my mom is looking down and she's smiling. My mother was the rock and the support for the family, and I've noticed that my father and brother have gone to their bachelor lifestyle, and I'm the one that usually is, hey, get this stuff cleaned up, let's get it together. Men will be men, sort of like little playboy, you know, having their fun and not worrying about somebody telling them to pick up their dirty socks or throw them in, throw their underwear in the basket but um my daughter my younger 
Karen, like her life. dad needs her. Her dad really, really needs her. I have my big old daughter. Okay. I have yeah. my little skinny. Well, your baby's all grown up and she's a project yeah. manager. And I say we get back to work and get these guys a hand. Let's go. We got something We're through. It's almost about the end of the day. Come on. Oh, mostly though. It's more than just a cruise down Main Street. It's a small town revolution. Designer Genevieve Gorder takes on the challenge of her life. She and her team put mind, muscle, and MasterCard to work. Reinventing, refurbishing, rebuilding small towns and small businesses. The result? Welcome to America the Beautiful. It's TLC's new series, Town Hall. Saturday at 10 on TLC. Brought to you by MasterCard. If you don't take care of the teens, they don't take care of you, and then there's problems. And every small town needs to make a special place that teens can hang out because that's your town. In 10 years, that's the adults. Guys, can you talk about Teen Center? Teen Center. Three-star clue. Clue. Yeah, it's three-star clue. When we walked in there, I couldn't draw my attention away from his cowboy hat long enough to... <laughs> To think about the smell. You couldn't smell? It was stinking. It was awful. I like him. He loves kids. He's remodeled most of it himself out of crap that he found <laughs> out back. And he really tries hard with this place, yeah. even though attendance has dropped off the cliff. Supposedly it's a bad street. Well, it's just a circumstance of lighting. It's certainly not proximity, because it's literally 45 <laughs> feet off the town square. From the courthouse. <laughs> but you but, guys are from the big city, so you think it's laughable that people think there's a bad area to yes. a small southern town. <laughs> If there is a bad area to this town, it would be that street. It's just not inviting. I think just by opening up the windows and making daylight be able to shine in and people able to see in, mm -hmm. that takes away a lot of the creepiness factor. And it also makes it someplace that you can go in the day. Lighting can create the vibe at night. Otherwise, it should be brighter, more ethereal, and lovely. I like that. If we make this place less sketchy, less scary, and bring in all the kids that he wants to bring in, maybe he can hire some teenagers to keep it running. We just need to get the teens really involved. That includes from project management to structurally. We need to get some kind of business club or something in there to start, start making up a strategy of how this is going to be run and bring more kids with music that everyone will listen to. That's just variety. That's what we need. Right? I agree, yeah. At Three Star, we're going to lighten the floors, paint the walls, and build a cappuccino bar. There always seems to be one demographic that is um, perceived as troublesome, and that happens to be the teenagers in every community. I don't think teenagers are troublesome. I think they just need a place to go. Yeah. And when they have a place to go... <laughs> when teens want to do something, they drive close to an hour out of town. Get to Greenville. Right. Yeah, Sarah. We have two pretty good youth venues, Straight Street and Five Star Club. No one knows where Three Star is. Someone in a town hall meeting called a Five Star. Is there anybody here who does use the Three Star Club? Who goes? Nobody knows where it is? You guys, your town is a square. I know, it's this big. Trust me, this is not the first place where this town wants a teen club. There is a particular venue we have in mind and it is on a street that has been deemed occasionally, we've heard, as unsafe. People think it's a little unsafe. I doubt there are any, like, major gang rumbles. Unsafe is usually because of poor design decisions. Not because it's really unsafe, but because maybe the lights are bad. So I think we need to provide for the teens right off the square instead of right off into another community. And that's why we would like to do David and Mary the Three Star Club. Yeah! <laughs> Some people were smiling and some people weren't, but the teens in this area need Free Star. We also need to create some project managers for this project. And we need to have teenagers running the show here about what this is going to look like, what this is going to feel like, what kind of vibe is going to be here so that everyone will come. So we have Babs and Dabs. Please come up. Hey, Babs and Dabs. They're going to be part of the three star. They're going to be two of the three three stars. Okay. I was glad that it was named the three stars name. I'm going to be in charge. I'll be on top. She'll be, she'll be under me. Both of us. And this 
This is going to be a lot of drama. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Babs and Dabs are the only identical twins in Lawrence. My parents really like the ramen thing, so they put Dabs and Babs. They have a ton of friends and seem to get along. Babs and Dabs are very funny. They both have two different personalities, even though they're twins. <laughs> Dabs is feisty and she's obnoxious. Babs is probably what most people think as the nice twin, but they don't see what goes on at home. I've seen Dabs and Babs get in a lot of fights, so I really don't know which is the worst. They told me one time about one of them, I think it was Dabs, pushed the other down the stairs. She kicked me down the stairs one time. That really scared me. I just kind of kicked her. And she did. She fell down the stairs. It wasn't too pretty, but it's funny now. I think we need a teen center in Lawrence for people like my friends and myself to go and hang out. Babs and Dabs are a strong team. You mean. But will the two most popular girls be able to pull this off? All right, let's go, fellas. We've got some work that needs to be done here today. Come here, I want these boxes to be moved out, guys. Let's get this show on the road. There are only two people living in that big house right now, Sarge and his son, Kenny. I think we're going to take care of the outside. We'll get that completely under control if Karen can get in there and get the brothers working on getting that attic cleaned out. Let's get it done. I want that thrown out. We don't need that. Take that down and out. I'm corrupting the bachelor lifestyle. It's about time that these men start doing some domestic work around here. Well, she's rearranging everything. Let's go. No time for talking. Hustle, hustle. Let's get this moving. Let's go. Get it going. I don't think Sarge's late wife would have ever let the house or even the attic get into the shape it's in right now. They're still That's the good old days, Daddy. Come in. Come in. These are the hey, 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 the hero, the hero. Let's go, troops. We Come on, guys. You can use a broom. I'm sure you can. Now, the next thing we've got to do is get this soldier in shape. Yeah, we got to shake this soldier up. Woo-wee. We now have this whole family, and Karen especially, who's going to make sure that not only is this renovation going to fix the building, but it's going to start motivation for other things in all of their lives to get moving. Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's got to be a free day. That's a good day to rest. Yeah, a good day to rest. It's called Get Your Rest. We're going to surprise Sarge. We're going to wake him up and get him on an exercise regimen. He has no idea. He is sleeping. No, no, no. Ah. Serge says he's gained a little weight since his wife passed away, and Karen wants to get him back on track. She's on him about his diet, and she's direly trying to get him to exercise. <laughs> Wake up, Sergeant Major! No, no, no. Time to get up, Sergeant Major! No. He kind of threw the cover over said and totally did not want to participate in our eight o'clock run. Karen, no. Come on, Dad, you gotta get in shape. Karen. You said we couldn't surprise you, we're surprising Karen. you. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. This was not cool today. Oh, it's not cool no, today. No. Okay, Daddy. Bye. As we work towards changing the house, we'll work towards changing his routine as well. Today's the first day of the project. I'm ready to break stuff. <laughs> I really am. Hey, yeah, finally our project manager hey, showed up. Hey, hey, what's right. up? Hey, what's girls? up? Dabs and babs. I thought we were working today. Uh, we are. Like that? Oh, those, are, those are cute helmets you guys have on there. Can we take these off, by the way? No. No. Uh, no. Babs and dabs, they're worried about making things pretty, including themselves. I'm worried about getting that project finished. I think we need to get rid of some of them Beverly yeah, Hills Rodeo Drive outfits there. <laughs> Girls, we got some uh, outfit changes this here for you. You guys want to be project managers, so... I think it's kind of scary putting Babs and Dabs in charge of this place. I can't even tell them apart. You don't get any dust in your cute little mouths and noses. Uh -huh. B is for uh, Babs. All right. We get the D. Look, we need to tighten this deal up here. I think all the hazards she's going to run into on the job aren't nearly as hazardous as, as the yeah, is this. Outfit change. Are you ready to go to work? I think Babs and Dabs would be great figureheads for this thing. How you feel? Great. How you feel? I think they'll really get in there and knock it out. Go for it. 
That was all me. Oh, that was me. Hey, David. Hello, how y'all doing? Good. Y'all doing a mighty fine job, bad and damn, but I'm gonna tell you, y'all got to get on it. You really got to get on the job because we have a time frame here, a time limit, and y'all got to see that this job get done, okay? We'll get it done. Okay. Y'all changed on me. I know Bab is the smallest. No, nope, you're wrong. Well, everybody be like, how do you tell you guys apart? And Bab's is like, my butt's bigger. Dab. Okay, you Dab. No. David, just like everybody else, can't tell us apart. I think David knows her name, so he was just trying to see if we, he could confuse us. Okay, this is Bab. Nope. But this is Dab. No. Well, okay, see, now one of you Bab and one of you Dab. Now, if you Bab, <laughs> This gotta be Dab. I don't wanna tell them, but I don't know who's who. We're just gonna call them the Ab Sisters. You Dab. No! Hey Abs, come here. Well, this is Bab. No. Okay, you Bab. Yes. Okay, very good. And you know who I am, right? I'm the chocolate cowboy. <laughs> Dabs and Dabs are hilarious. No, Babs and Dabs are... I still can't Abs. tell them apart. Ab. I can't either. Babs has braces, that's how I know. Oh. Yes. Braces? Babs has braces, Here. just on the bottom. Oh. Yeah. Dude, you've been spending a lot of time you with the twins. To, you have to get them talking. Because if they're standing there with their mouths closed, you can't tell. But if she starts to talk, you can see her braces Hold on. and you know which one. That has been no problem at all to get them to talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> During the Backstreet renovation, we just couldn't keep Sarge away. Five cent soda? The last time I seen a five cent Coke, I was a little boy, and you stuck your hand down in cold water and got it out. We're gonna make it uh, jump off the wall and come alive again. And you and, can uh, restore all of that in Well, we're gonna, we're gonna try. <laughs> All the chairs and tables out of the way and knocked a couple walls down. Still got a long way to go though. David's getting on my nerves. He's just kind of in the way. He doesn't really do anything. Bab and dab, when they at work, I'm out here reading the Bible because I know they're going to work. You don't have to. You tired? Not yet. Charge. Yeah, but you gotta have some input. Some input? I'm gonna leave it up to Bab. Mm -hmm. How do you know Babs? <laughs> <laughs> the structure on Sarge's looks awesome. The brickwork, the archways, but everything like the windows and the doors. Man, the doors don't even have doorknobs on them, so we gotta completely replace all that stuff. Now, Jimmy, what are we doing this morning? <laughs> this is your brand new front door, Karen. It's starting to get really cold around here. Certainly is, which is more of an indication why we need to get this door hung. Well, right now, Sarge, he's got to reach way up to the top of his screen door and, like, get his fingers in the hole to get the thing open. He doesn't even have a doorknob on it. Now take this screen door down. What exactly is holding the screen door up? Oh, not too much of nothing, shall we? Paint. Pink. Oh, I can mean right. it. Let's move this to the side. The new. There are simple details in life, but when they go awry, everything in life gets harder. When you don't have a doorknob, um, life is a little bit harder. When you don't have windows that open, life is a little bit harder. These are the simple things that we have to fix in Sarge's place. I like these. Mm -hmm. This is awesome and perfect. They're vinyl and they come with a lifetime warranty. Oh yeah, that's going to be, be nice. beautiful. That'll be really nice. Project manager, we want to do big things. Hey Sarge, how's it going down here? 
Let's go on. All right, you make sure they bring these windows in, and I don't want anything broken. Uh -huh. When I got up to Sarge's and I saw those windows, I thought someone ordered the wrong windows. Those were not the windows I wanted. My reaction to the windows that showed up at Sarge's was I was Thank you, ticked off majorly. Um, you know, you go from town to town, and each historic society has their different specs on what you can use in the building. Well, I thought I had specified that, but... I, I did not want vinyl windows on a historic building. I wanted wood windows. We've got one, two, three, four, five holes in the wall right now, so let's just roll with it. I'll tell Karen. Come on down, Karen. All right. Come on down, we a little powwow. We're going to have that little talk. All right. Here we go. Let's go down here and talk. Okay. So, we had to sit down and work together on how we were going to get these things to look the way they needed to look. I wanted wood windows in there. Okay. I like wood windows. It's my choice when I'm dealing with historic preservation. Yes. Because it's more period data. She saw how upset I was about the wrong windows showing up, and I think that's why she really started crying, is because she realized she's the one who picked these windows. I get emotional when it comes to things. Sure. And I wish you hadn't been there Saturday, and maybe that would have helped me to understand better the choices that were available to me. I freaked out when I saw Karen crying. This is the last thing you want is someone you're doing work for crying, unless they're crying with tears of joy. If we have to put different windows in there, all we're going to have to do is wait 24 hours. Okay. We don't have to wait another month or anything like that, okay? Okay. So I'm going to take care of you, okay? Thank I promise. Give me my handshake. Come here. You all right? I will be in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. The twins weren't very phased by anything gross. I mean, yeah, there was some nasty stuff in the kitchen that we encountered. You smell it? It's not that bad. Yeah. It was worse. Oh. The whole place was stinking for days and we didn't know what it was. Oh! I think we should oh throw this God. stuff away. This says fish. <laughs> It was so disgusting. Is there some garbage in here or something? Dang, oh. Are you gonna throw up? This is what's sticking. Oh, it smells awful. All right, that's it. What is it though? Oh. Is it fish? <laughs> here, here, you see. Oh my God. It's squishy. You see. Oh, it's making me throw up. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> But the twins, you know, they picked it up out of the out of the sink and threw it away. I didn't. It was nasty. <laughs> I'm on bar. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any volunteers? There was so much to do at Three Star. I sent the girls over to Sarge's to steal some volunteers. Hey! Hey you guys, listen! We need five volunteers. Oh. Oh, you're too slow, young women. What you need help we need with? Five. Babs and Dabs are doing great, but they got a lot to do. They're pawning off their work onto volunteers. <laughs> That's not right. You're out of luck. <laughs> you're out of luck. Anybody want to? There's one. She'll, she'll go with you. And she'll go too. I'll take your shovel. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, bring them back now. We need them back. <laughs> it's a little frustrating when the plants always have to take the back seat. Babs and Dabs play like they're really tough when I'm around, but I did hear they made the volunteers clean the kitchen. It's pretty good management. Oh, yes. Bag all of this stuff. Don't worry about open stuff. You can throw it away. If you can tell that it's old like this, go ahead and throw it away. Okay. And if it's gross, just throw it away. Okay. 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 Have fun. We're carrying, you know, all kinds of lumber, working up a sweat, and Babs and Dabs are just kind of hanging out over there playing with the dog. And although the dog is pretty cute, you know, they could put in a little bit of work as well. I think we should switch places. What do you think? Good yeah. idea. No, no, no. We're project managers. Oh, no. Power tends to corrupt people, and I think Babs and Dabs are realizing how much power they really have as project managers, and, and they're starting to scare me a little bit. Look at oh. us. What volunteers are for? <laughs> I can touch it. Go work. You need to go work. Dad, hey, go. I really want to hold it. Go. 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 So we got this beautiful area here, but it hasn't really had anything that 
to stand out with it, to say what this is. This looks really good. So what we're doing is we're going to start over. We're going to take things away, then we're going to plan to put things back here to say, this used to be Backstreet. Either we're going to make a planner out of this car, or we're going to get it out of here. Sarge has kept his wife's car for a couple of years now, and it means a lot to him, and he's very emotional about her passing, but we've got to get that car out of there. Since the day she died, the car has not moved. I understand the sentimental purpose of that car being there, but in order to move on, we must move it. Babs and dabs are fighting like little children. They're sisters. What do you want to do? That thing is ugly. Get down. They need to act their age and take charge of this project. We caught them eating some chips during work time. David, what are you doing? Quit eating. It's not time. We got stuff to do. We're working really hard. David's being pretty lazy. That's uncalled for. Come on, let's go work. If uh, Bab and Dab think they're in charge, I get more work done. So I let them think they're in charge. However, I'm in charge. David, what are you doing? All you do is eat. What she got me? in there? What she got in there? Uh, it has some chicken. So, I cooked this Sunday before last. Yeah, go get to eating. Well, thank you very much. Give me permission. Thank you. Frustrated with David, the girls came to me for help. Hey, Jim, we're having a problem. What? David's not doing anything. He's just sitting around eating. We are not getting any help. No, he's eating. He's just sitting there eating. What's he eating? I don't Chips. Know. These 17 year old girls are just busting it. And David's just like chilling, having a snack. You know, you think we're working on your place, you might want to help. All right, I'll be over in a little bit. I just gotta get some more stuff out of pockets. Thanks. Thanks. Tell David to get out. Hey. Yes. I was told that you've been sitting around eating a lot of chips. I've been sitting around at time because I had to make sure everything was on the safe side. Is that what you're doing? That's what I've done. I have a few chips, you know. I munch when I'm sitting. <laughs> I love to munch. Some people call it eating, but I eat very little. Munch. You just munch. Munch. David? <laughs> they the one who telling me I need to be here. Nah. Come on. I can't trust him farther than I can throw him. Honestly. It's amazing, but just 24 hours, the whole window issue was completely resolved because we wound up wrapping those windows in wood to make them paintable, to make them look like wood windows. Now that we've cased them out with wood, we've given them that, that pure look of, of when the building was built. How do you feel about them now? Much, much happier. I could sit here today and actually go back to the spot that I was at yesterday and just feel wonderful today. The final outcome for those windows wound up being something that I was very pleased with. It gives the house a feeling of home again, and that's something that's been missing for a long time. The creme de la creme, the thing that made me really happy, was Sarge yelled up at me and said, I love this. Sarge, if you like the windows, I like the windows. Hey, I love the windows. Sometimes a mistake can turn out to be the best thing in the world. Keep you out for good. I told Babs and Dabs that David's gotta go. You have got to go. But well, we love you. Are you sad? No, I'm not sad, Dab. Babs. Babs. Dabs. You bad. No. Bye, David. Bye. It was hard to kick David out, but you know, as project managers, we you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. David told me that Babs and Dabs kicked him out of his own club. Great job, girls. That's a good idea. Uh-oh. Uh-huh, uh -huh, David! No, turn around. You can't be in here, David! In my own club. Go! 
Babs and Dads has not seen the last of the Chocolate Cowboy because I will be back. Moving on is a really difficult thing, and I can't imagine losing a spouse. Sarge lost his beloved bunny, and her car is still sitting across the street in the lot. Hey, Dad, do you think it would be a good idea if we move the car? When it's time to tow the car away, it'll be an emotional time for him. Does this remind you of Mom at all, yep. Dad? Yeah, it does. Now I don't want to see it because it's almost like the beauty of that car is gone. This was her last big new car that we bought in the rain, 7 o'clock at night. It is just time to turn the page. It reminds me of Mom, and then it reminds me that she would want well, us to move on. I'm going to take man. the last oh, check. It's brought our family closer together. It's allowed us to reflect on my mother's spirit in a totally different way. Hey, I'm cute. This car is similar to my father in the facet that it is stalled. It hasn't moved, and in a lot of ways, my father hasn't moved forward either in so many ways. A car is an inanimate object, but the human soul, it can be moved. I think this renovation, restoration, is going to be a lot about opening a new chapter in Sarge's life. Oh. I know your wife was your best friend. She was your partner for right. years. And we're taking away that car. That car, and I know you kept that because that was hers. That was hers. I remember when we bought that car. <laughs> what oh, year was that? that? 19, whatever that car is, 79 <laughs> or something. Paul oh, had a part of this car. I salute you. Go ahead, salute. So long, old blue. Bye, bunny. Bye bye. There go a part of my life. That's it. The car that was bought in the rain at a dinner with my wife. That's funny how you know how you when you bought a car and why you bought it. I feel sort of sad, but I got a lot of fond memories about the car. And it happened to do with me and my wife. So, yeah, I got, I got some feeling. You're okay with it being Yeah, good. but I'm okay with it. Next week on Town Hall. We need that final big push in the end. I go into a zone. Take it in and under. What? She's gonna drop it. And we have controversial people involved in this farmer's market. We're seemingly stuck in 1962. She's a troublemaker and an instigator. You guys are the devil. <laughs> this means so much to me. Three, two, one!